So we're coming up on the holidays. We've got Thanksgiving coming up, we've got Christmas coming up, and it's the perfect time to make one of these guys. Now this is a nice 14 pound turkey. When you're gonna barbecue a turkey, you wanna do a few things that are a little bit different than if you're just gonna be putting it into the oven. You wanna think about moisture, how long you're gonna be cooking it for, the type of woods you're gonna be using, the temperature that you're cooking it at. So we're gonna cover all that stuff here. I'm gonna be spatchcocking the turkey like we did in our chicken recipe. This is gonna do a couple things. One, when we add it to our brine solution, it will absorb all that brine because it's gonna be cut down. Two, when we're looking at the temperatures between the thighs and the breasts, they're gonna be right next to each other. We'll be able to monitor right on top. We'll get a nice crisp skin on this. We're gonna put some herbs in here and we're gonna layer it with flavors. We're gonna have three different flavor combinations coming together to make the whole flavor profile. So this is gonna be awesome. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is break down this bird a little bit. We're gonna spatchcock it and take this backbone out. And then we're going to create the brine or use the brine. Today we're gonna be using this turkey bath. We have apple, rosemary, sage in here. There's some citrus notes and some other things that are going to absorb into this turkey to really make it amazing. And it's gonna keep those holiday flavors, which is what we want. The, with Christmas and Thanksgiving coming up, this is a great time for this meal. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, let's cover a little of the uh, rules when it comes to dealing with poultry. We don't talk about quite enough. When you're dealing with poultry, you need to be very sanitary. You wanna make sure that you're washing your hands often, but also you wanna make sure that you keep the poultry at a certain temperature. So we're gonna be brining this turkey. And what that means is we're going to be adding spices and salt and sugars to water and then putting it back in the refrigerator. So this bird was frozen. Most turkeys are gonna come frozen. When you're selecting your turkey, you wanna think about the amount of brine solution that's in there. This turkey had a very low brine solution. It was one of the natural young turkeys and, and uh, so that's one of the reasons that I selected it. You don't want anything over 8%. Some of these turkeys have 20%, 15% of the brine solution and you're paying for that liquid that, that they put in there, the liquids and maybe some salts and things like that. So look for a young turkey that doesn't have a lot of brine in it when it's frozen. That way you're not paying for the water, you're paying for the turkey. Once you get your turkey home, put it in your freezer. If it's going to be more than four or five days until you're going to be cooking it, you're gonna to wanna to leave it frozen until the thaw. When you're thawing out your turkey, you wanna give it about one day, 24 hours per every five pounds of turkey. So this was about a 14, 14 and a half pound turkey. Once I took the giblets and the neck out, it's about 14 pounds. So I gave it three full days to thaw in the refrigerator, still wrapped in its packaging and it's in the refrigerator and it was just sitting in that packaging in the cool air and allowing the ice to start to break down. When I took it out of the packaging earlier, it still had ice inside it. I still had to pull that neck out of there and it was frozen in there and still had some ice on it. So make sure that you're keeping it nice and cool. Once I pulled it out, I ran a little water through it. I rinsed off the skin, I rinsed off the inside. Now the next step that we're gonna be doing is spatchcocking this bird. I had mentioned earlier, the reason we're spatchcocking is because of the cook time as well as the evenness of cooking. We're gonna to wanna to remove any of the unnecessary pieces that are on this bird. First things first, let's get this backbone out of here. Now, the easiest way to do this is by using some cooking shears. Get some really nice heavy duty ones. You're gonna to wanna to go right down the backbone and you wanna be careful that you're avoiding things like the wing here and you wanna cut right through it. It's gonna give you a little bit of resistance and just keep working down the side of that backbone. And you can see right where you're going there. You're gonna come up to this bone here and just kind of muscle your way through. And you can get it from the other end as well. There we go. Right here. There we go. So once you get through this side, and you wanna take out any of these nasty little bits that are still in there, go ahead and take off the other side of your backbone. So I'm gonna cut right down here as well. Ah. 
And that is why you need a nice, sharp pair of shears. Once we have the backbone out, set this aside. We can make some chicken stock with that. You'll notice I also took off this fatty tail piece. That's unneeded. We don't need that. You'll find that when you're cooking your Thanksgiving turkey, that's all the discarded stuff anyway. So there is a lot of skin on here. You want enough to cover the breast, but you can get rid of a lot of this excess skin. A lot of this is unneeded. So go ahead and just cut that right off. That's good. That's gonna be nice. Now one of the things that most of the commercial birds come with is this little thermometer in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that right out. That's totally unneeded. We don't need that for what we're gonna be doing. All right, in the back of the bird here, you're gonna have your wishbone, which is in the back here, which goes right in between underneath the breasts, and then you're going to have your sternum bone. So now we're going to be splitting the bone right here. You wanna give it a nice snip right there. And flip it over. You wanna spread this out flat. You wanna hear that crack. Giving it CPR here. So one of the things that we wanna do that I mentioned earlier is take out the wishbone. You can feel the bone right in there. Run your knife right under and up. And of course, you don't have to do this. If you want to leave the wishbone in there so you can break it for good luck, you can go right ahead. The reason I'm removing this, which it takes a little bit of digging to do here, is because once we cook this, I'll be able to slice slices off of the breast. There we go. I'll be able to slice slices right off the breast, off the side, without having to remove them, and I can go all the way through. So I got my wishbone out, cut it in half, and as you can see, I split the bones right here so I could lay it flat. So let's flip this over, and take a look at what we, what we have here. So as you can see now, we have our bird laying flat. You wanna just see how the presentation looks. Now we can leave it just like this, we can brine it, and we can throw it out on the grill after it's brined. But first thing we're gonna do is clean it up a little bit more on the inside. I mentioned earlier, some of these bones here are unneeded, especially along this thigh. Now something I wanna do, I wanna loosen up the skin from the thigh meat. I'm gonna run my fingers under here, and you can see all this good meat that just wants to pop out. Now you can see on the side of the thigh here, we have some bones. These are gonna get separated. Now I'm gonna run my knife right under those bones, bringing it out, and then bring it back down the other side. Okay. And you can see right in here, once we get to this point, we have this knuckle joint, that's why I popped it. Once you get under that knuckle joint, and continue down the side of the thigh, and take off as little meat as you can, until you get to the end, just like that. Took a little work, but we got it out. This bone is worthless. You can chuck this. I'm gonna take these bones right out. And of course, you can do as little or as much trimming as you want. I just like taking all these bones out so I know that they're not trash that we're gonna to have to deal with later. Very good. Let's get this other side. Get some of that connective tissue off of there. And take out these rib bones. Totally unneeded. This connecting tissue, that can go too. But don't cut the skin. Only the inside. The skin is what's going to hold this together. So one of the things that we want to do here is we want to expose some of this meat. We want to pop out this. Don't completely separate it. Just bring it out a little bit. I'm going to run my hand right 
over here so that we can make sure that we have some seasoning in there and some of the brine. All right, that's about as much trimming as I want to do. This bird is ready to go into the brine. So we have our briner bucket here. This is the big 22 quart briner bucket, perfect for turkeys and things like that. So the first thing we're gonna do in using this turkey bath is we're going to add a half cup of salt to a quart of water. Let that dissolve a little bit. Now that that's dissolving, we're gonna add our turkey into the brinder bucket. All right. Okay, now that we have our turkey in the brinder bucket, we are going to add our salt water that's dissolved. Okay, so now's the time that we're going to be adding our turkey bath to this. I'm gonna be adding the whole bottle right in here. It's got those really good apple juice, sage, rosemary, some citrus notes to it. it smells really, really good. I'm gonna rinse this bottle out right in there. Make sure we get all of it in there. Dump that right in. And we're gonna add about a gallon more of water. And you just wanna use the turkey here to mix it all around. Once you have your turkey here, add a little bit more water until it's totally covered. That looks good right about there. We want this turkey totally submerged. I'm gonna put in my locking plate and lock it in there. Add the lid to the brine or bucket. Now I'm gonna be putting this back into the refrigerator for one to one and a half hours per pound of turkey. So 14 to 21 hours I'm gonna be putting this in there. I'll be taking it out about nine o'clock tomorrow morning. All right, so we just got our turkey out of the refrigerator. I put it in at about 1.30 yesterday and it's about 10 o'clock now. So it's had about an hour and a half per pound to brine. So we're gonna take it out of here. And I have my cookie sheet pan here with a little wire rack on it so that this can drain. As you can see, I've got some paper towels on it for now just to catch the first wave of moisture. So I'm gonna pull this up, being careful not to rip any of the skin. Ooh, it's cold. All right, first things first, we're gonna try and get rid of the excess moisture that we see. Ah, seasoning smells really good. And you can see exposing that meat by spatchcocking the bird and pulling the muscles away from the skin, it really got all those nice flavors deep down in there. That brining process is just gonna help so much with those holiday flavors we're trying to get. Okay. So the whole process now is just to sop up any of this extra moisture then we're going to be putting this exposed on this wire rack back into the refrigerator. You want to do this for about 24 hours to really dry out the skin. That's what we're trying for now. We're going to be trying to dry out that skin as much as possible so that we get that nice crisp skin on the exterior. But for now I'm just going to keep sopping up this moisture. So this is really the important part here is this top part. And as you can see I have the wire rack there. This wire rack is going to allow air to circulate around the turkey and get the underneath part nice and dried out. You want to make sure you leave enough skin to cover the breast, so I guess that's okay. Once you start seeing that waxy look to the skin, you're getting to about where you need to be. Make sure you get all sides. These wings can get a little tricky. 
So we're gonna cook this with the wing tips on, but I think we're gonna cut those off right at the end. Okay, once we have this bird to a nice dry consistency on the top, we don't see anything else dripping or any real moisture. We want to leave it just like this and put it into the refrigerator for 24 hours. We want, we want that long amount of time to dry out the skin. As long as your refrigerator is at a consistent uh, even temperature, it's going to be okay. It'll keep this bird nice and cool and it's also going to dry it out. So let's check back when that's done. All right, it's day three of our turkey prep. And as you can see, I'm sporting my dad bod barbecue. Star Wars font t-shirt. I think it's looking pretty good. So we're going to be making a compound butter to put under the skin of the turkey now. Today's the day we actually go put it out. It's Thanksgiving. So I'm gonna start off with a few herbs here. I'm gonna have parsley, sage, thyme, and rosemary. So let's start off. We're just gonna be mincing these all up and adding them for a compound butter. I'm gonna get rid of the big woody stems here. We don't need that. And try and slice through the herbs. You don't really want to bruise them up. You wanna give them a nice slice as you're going through. That way you don't get them smashed down and they darken up and all the good oils and juices come out of them. When you're slicing herbs, try and use a very sharp knife. When you have a very sharp knife, it's much easier to get through here. You won't get those leaves that are still stuck together. Next, I'm gonna be doing our thyme. Now, thyme's a little different. All you really need to do with the thyme is to strip it off. We're looking to get about a teaspoon each of these herbs to add to a compound butter. Oh, by the way, I had my unsalted butter sitting out for about an hour. You want it to soften up. You can see there's a, a nice pliability to it. And it's nice and soft. So we're going to add that into the bowl and we're gonna add these herbs to it and mix it up and be layering it under the skin. So with this time, take off a sprig go backwards with it and they fall right off. The little non-woody end will pop right off. You don't want that hard stem in there. Again, we're going for about a tablespoon each of these. It doesn't have to be an exact science. Just find a nice mixture that looks good. Now there's a few tiny stems in there. I'm just gonna give this a rough chop just to break those up a bit. We don't want anyone chewing on a stem while we are eating our turkey. So for the sage, we just want to throw these big leaves in here. All right. So I'm going to take these leaves. I'm going to roll them up here. And we're going to bring in, last but not least, the rosemary. Again, just taking it off of that big thick stem, popping off the end. Nice and easy. It's probably my favorite holiday herb, rosemary. I love rosemary. I use it all, all year long, but this one's my favorite for poultry. Might want a little bit more in there. That doesn't seem like quite enough. Actually, it's okay. Yeah, maybe one more. All right. 
That is perfect. Okay, so we're gonna be mixing up our compound butter now. Let's get a little bowl. We're going to be adding some seasoning in here. A little bit of salt, a little, some more flavors. We're gonna be adding a quarter cup of our poultry seasoning. This one's called the Ranchero Seasoning by Cattleman's Grill. And this has awesome flavors for this time of year, especially for poultry. This is made for poultry. It's perfect on turkey, perfect on chicken. I'm just gonna be using about a quarter cup in my mix here. Yep. And now, let's add our seasonings in here. Okay, now we're just gonna be mixing up this butter with all these herbs. This is fucking terrible. Okay, so we're gonna be getting right in here and mixing this with our hands now, really getting it incorporated with the butter. Try not to spill any. This bowl is a little too small. And I'm really just gonna work it around and press it in until it turns into that compound butter pastiness. This is actually looking really good. All right, so you want it to look a little something like that. All right, so now we're gonna be seasoning up our turkey. I just noticed I cut a little too much skin off the backside. You don't wanna do this. This is a little snafu on my part, but that's okay. It's still gonna cook perfectly well. You just wanna be able to cover the breasts. I noticed on the end, I kinda went a little high on it, but since it's already exposed, let's get some rub on here. Now underneath here, for the breasts, as you can see, I've already separated most of the skin. I just slide my hands under, and this was where that temperature probe that was already in the turkey was. Be careful of that. You don't want to rip the skin here. You just want to continue separating it down from the meat. Don't rip that skin. Okay. This looks great. Oh, the smell from that brine is amazing. Okay, so I'm going to be taking my compound butter here. I'm going to be taking about half of it and putting it on this side. I'm going to get it under there. There's a few tricks here that you can do because it's still a little bit cold. The turkey's still cold. So I'm going to put it under there and just work it down using the skin like that. All these herbs and the salt from the rub is going to be perfect for this. Let's take this other side. You want to try and work it down there as best you can. Now the beautiful thing about this is it's not just the herbs. The butter that we're putting in here is going to baste those turkey breasts. A lot of people inject, sometimes I inject the breasts. There's a million ways to cook a turkey, and this is just one of them. This is the way that I like to do it for the holidays. I might do a, a more traditional cook for Christmas. Who knows, we'll see what we're doing for that. For that cook. Maybe a prime rib, that would be nice. All right. So I'm working these herbs down. And you can see it under the skin there. That's the nice thing about it. And of course, pork and poking through that hole there. All right, take what little we have left under this side. Slide a little bit up there. Make sure that's nice and closed off. And I'll get the rest out of this bowl which isn't much, and just make sure the tops are slathered here. So the cool thing about this is, when we go to cut these breasts, as we make slices, whether we do long slices or whether we do the short slices across, you're gonna have this beautiful layer of herbs, buttered herbs that cooked on top of there. It's gonna be awesome. All right, so let's start 
getting the rest of this bird season. I'm just gonna be using the Ranchero, same seasoning I used. You can use any poultry seasoning. And I'm just gonna get underneath the meat here on the thighs and the legs. And put a pretty generous amount on there. Get it nice and seasoned up. Right on that exposed flesh there. Good. Get it back in there. Let's do the other side. There we go. And this is why we pulled that meat back. You can see the darkness of the meat from that brine. So all we're doing here is just adding that last layer of flavor on top. Beautiful. Okay. Let's tuck those back in. One thing I'm gonna use on the skin to help crisp it, but also to get this lovely seasoning to stick is some of this duck fat. I'm just gonna put a nice little layer on there. Nothing too crazy. This will help get to the end of the, we're getting to the end of the bottle here. This will help crisp it up, but also Help these stick. Oh yeah, perfect. And don't forget about all these little crevices and cracks and crannies. Want to get in the wings. Want to get on the outside of the thigh as well and the leg. Top of the breasts. And also on the underside of here, we're gonna get a little bit on there as well, just for any of that exposed meat. Probably should have done this first. That's okay. We'll flip it right back over. Now make sure it looks the way you want it to look before you put it out onto the cooker. You want to position it because the way it positions is how it's going to cook. And you can see I have this foil lined pan underneath here. That's to catch all those drippings. We wanna make our gravy utilizing the drippings from the turkey. So I'm making sure that I have my regular, it's a regular cookie sheet and I just lined it with some extra thick foil. And we're gonna use that to catch our drippings. All right, make sure that's the last of the seasoning. And now, last thing I'm gonna do is make this guy relax. We're gonna tuck the wings behind the breasts so that those wing tips don't burn off. That's the only reason I really keep the wing tips on there is so that it can hold the wings up. Otherwise, the wing tips are pretty useless. Nobody's gonna be eating those. So, all right, one last position. Now, let's get it out on the grill. Okay, so we're out here at the grill. Now we're gonna be putting the bird on. I've got this Kamado running at about 300 to 325 degrees. Now. You can run anywhere from 225 if you're doing a slow smoke, all the way up to 400, 425 degrees, depending on how you want to cook it. I'm going for a roasting temperature of 300 to 325. So let's get this on. You can see I've got just barely enough room to put this on here. There we go. Now I'm rolling cherry smoke with just a little bit of hickory in there. It's, I, I put a big chunk of cherry and then two small chunks of hickory on there and that's gonna be a really nice flavor profile. The cherry is nice and light and the hickory will give it that awesome flavor. So as we can see, we're coming along just fine. We've got, so this is where what I was talking about. I cut the skin a little bit too much over the breast but you can see here we have some really nice browning going on everything setting in we're at about 125 degrees in the middle of that breast right now so we got some pullback here a little bit too too much skin off there but that's okay 
we're, we're going to be cutting this up anyways to eat. So it's looking really good. I'm just going to leave this rotated for now so we can get a nice even cook on this. So we just got this turkey off the grill. It was temping at about 160 degrees in the dead center of the breast, which is exactly where I wanted it to carry over. I've let it rest for about 25 to 30 minutes now, and it's about time to slice it up. The other place that you want to check is in the thigh. Let me show you where those are. And I just tented these loosely with foil for now, so they didn't lose too much heat. So you can see we've got a really nice color on the skin here. It did pull back a little from this thigh and a little from the breast, like I said earlier, but that's okay. We got a nice crisp skin here, and this smells amazing. That sweet water spice really put a, a very nice finish on this meat, and it smells incredible. When we're detaching the legs and the thighs, we just cut right through that skin. Very easy, because we had it spatchcocked. That's how easily it comes away. We're gonna set these to the side for now. We, we'll deal with these in just a minute. The wings, and you can feel where the, where the bend is in the wing, and you wanna come down right where that bend is. So basically, right in here. And when you get there, you wanna pop, pop it out. Oh, we cut a little breast with that. There we go. Set that one aside. The other one on the other side. See if I can show you a little better now. Right in here, you want that knuckle right there to pop out, like you just did. Then take your knife and run it right through there. You'll get a little piece of the breast, but that's okay. We'll set that one aside as well. Now the cool thing about the fact that we spatchcocked this bird is there's multiple ways for us to slice this breast now. We can slice it right off the side here, which I'll do with this side. Look at those herbs. Incredible. I'm usually going for between a quarter and a half an inch. Look at how juicy this is. And because we removed that bone, these slices are just coming right off. And these are some nice, big, long slices of turkey. Yeah. Looks good. Looks really good. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna stop right about there for now and show you another way to slice the breast. So find that bone in the middle. There's still the singular bone going right down the center. right here. You want to kind of ride that down and separate it. Now since we moved those rib bones, we removed those rib bones, it's not going to be a lot to contend with here. I'm going to set this aside for now. There's just this one piece on the bottom and I'm going to run the knife right under here. Just like that. Okay, now when I take this breast, what I want to do with this one is slice it the other way for some smaller pieces. I'm making these a little bit fatter. These are about a half an inch. Now, let's take a look in here. Jeez, that looks good. Look at how juicy that is. Oh, wow. Let's try a little piece. I wanna try a piece right here. I'm gonna take that skin and everything. Come and try this. Is it ridiculous? Let me grab a little piece here. Oh, holy Mary, mother, Jesus. Ooh. 
It's like the juiciest turkey I've ever made. Oh my god. That's ridiculous. You grabbed that there. Mmm, try the herbs. I did. Mmm. It's perfect. So I've never, I'm not a huge turkey breast fan. I usually go for the dark meat. This is, this is stupid. This is so good. I'm already eating dinner. Mmm. It's delicious. Oh my gosh. That's crazy good. Let's, okay. let's cut up some of this dark meat. I'm going to transfer this over to our platter here. Okay. Now let's get into the dark meat here. So of course we have our drumstick. We want to remove this turkey drumstick. Everything has a joint in it where you, right where you want to cut it. So I'm going straight down and of course pop that joint right where it wants to and then follow it through. You don't cut through the joint, just cut around it. Boom. Now with the bread, with the, excuse me, with the thigh, the only thing that should really be left in here is that singular bone going straight through. You could serve it just like this. If somebody wants an entire turkey thigh, they can eat it just like this. But I want to slice some of this up and chunk it out because I want to try it. Now we're getting to the bone here. I'm gonna work my way around the bone and pull that sucker out. There we go. Boom. Discard. Now the rest of this, I'm just gonna chunk it out. And I like the dark mane a little bit bigger pieces. All right, let's give this a whirl, because I love some dark meat turkey. Do you want to try this? <laughs> Is it? I can't be the only one eating this right now. <laughs> Did you already try it? Yeah. It's... It's so good. We can lock the door of the house and not share. That's true. That's so good, baby. Incredible. Oh my God. Amazing. So this turkey came out amazing. And all we did was we spatchcocked it. We took out that backbone. Now anyone, I, I've got a lot of comments lately about the word spatchcock. Everybody's laughing about it. Where it came from, it's, it's an Irish word that means dispatch the cock. Basically killing the, the chicken or the turkey or the fowl, whatever it is in order to have it for a meal, usually for Sunday dinner. And uh, so dispatch the cock turns into spatchcock and it was laid flat because sometimes they would make brick chicken where it was literally cooked between two bricks. And when it's laid flat like this, everything cooks even and it's super juicy. So that's why we did it that way this time. So once we took the bird out of the brine, we laid it onto a rack with a pan underneath to catch any of the moisture that's coming off of it. Once we did that, we blotted all of the skin to make sure that all that moisture was taken off the skin so it would crisp up nicely. We put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. I was able to get it out this morning. We seasoned it up with some of that Cattleman's Grill. We made that compound butter and we put it under the skin and then we threw it on the Kamado Grill. I put a big chunk of cherry wood on there because that's the flavor profile that I wanted today. And I had two smaller chunks of hickory just to amplify the flavor a little bit. So once this bird started getting to about 100 degrees, I started coating the outside with some fats. I had some duck fat on it originally when I put the ranchero seasoning on the skin, but I also started taking some of the drippings and some extra oil and put it on the outside so it didn't burn up too much. A lot of this color, that's from the cherry wood. Cherry wood is just so good at putting a smoke ring onto meat or coloring the, the uh, skin, and it's, it's a mild wood. It's a sweet fruit wood so it doesn't overdo it. This is incredible. I, I absolutely love it. I'm gonna finish cutting this up and I'm gonna tent it for when our guests arrive in about 10 minutes. So definitely, definitely try this for your next holiday meal. Try it at Christmas time. It's an incredible meal and I promise you won't be disappointed if you do it just like this. So check it out, try it out. One sec. I have sweat dripping down. Do you, can you grab a pit towel? Okay, take two.